Okay, so we make the assumption that you have got through your introduction and your body, you're at the conclusion. Now, at this point, my assumption is you're probably starting to run out of words. So in a conclusion, often you've used the words in the body of your text and you have very little left. The way to do a conclusion is you're going to want to start off with something which ties the whole article together. Usually, um, they have a criteria point which will be put towards restate the aim of your study. Um, so that's something you set up in the introduction of what your study is going to do. In the conclusion, you restate that. This study seek to look at the effectiveness of whatever and whatever, right? So you restate that. The second one is something which we set up in our body is you've got your strengths and your shortcomings of each. You also did a merits-based assessment. What that allows you to do is quite clearly and concisely in a conclusion sum up what were the strengths and the shortcomings of each of the approaches which you have uh, evaluated, compared, contrast, or whatever in the body of your assignment. What that allows you to do is, <clears throat> since you've already done that assessment, you're simply going to repeat it in compact form in your conclusion and come to a, uh, come to a conclusion based on what is in the body of your text. Again, we're going with the slide analogy. Uh, what's often been said to us is, by the time a marker gets to your conclusion, they should know what you're going to say. So they're not, there is no new information that you present in a conclusion. There's never new information in psychology writing. Instead, you're simply going to be as concise as possible to give the nuts and bolts, so essentially aim of the study, what are the strengths and shortcomings, and what have you selected as the best or most favorable or most effective or whatever language they want you to use as the conclusion of that and then you finish. Often word limits can be difficult so a conclusion is typically quite short compared to the rest but one of the easy ways that you can save words and ensure that you're within your academic writing protocol is that there is no new information in your conclusion. If you have new information in your conclusion, you need to take that out and either put it in the body or leave it out altogether because a good conclusion will have no new information in it. If you have followed those steps, then you should have an article written which hangs together in such a way that you can shoot people through your assignment as quickly as possible as stated in the, in the clip where we focus on how to write the body. We want people to have as little time as possible to use that pen. Ideally, if they get to the end and they're there before they knew it, you should get a good mark for that because you've guided them through and if everything you've said holds logically together and you have properly answered the question that they've asked, you should get a good mark for that piece. So hopefully this has helped you writing a conclusion and we'll move on in a different video to how you should use an outline to plan this all in total.